Well, Thomas, welcome to Director's Notes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. No, brilliant. And we're here to talk about the talent. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, excited to be chatting about it. Brilliant. I mean, it's such a cool film and you, I love the way you're looking at the industry and sort of reflecting a light back on it. Tell us, where did the inspiration come from? <laughs> um, I mean, I was, so our, our protagonist is this sort of low status production assistant on, on the set of a car commercial. I've never worked in a car commercial, but I have been that low status assistant on set. Um, so a lot of my inspiration, I guess, came from that. A lot of the research was just um, the kind of, you know, different roles I'd had. Um, and I mean, I wasn't, I don't think I intended for this to be a film about film or about the industry. A lot of that, you know, there is satire in it and a lot of that is just sort of incidental and me uh, remembering real experiences I had and sort of <laughs> often like dialing them back um, to make them seem more believable. Um, but really I chose, I chose the, the set of a car advert as our setting just because it's really fertile ground um, for the stuff I, I wanted to explore. Um, and you know, and, and and it's it's a good sort of starting point for drama. It's there's a very clear hierarchy on a on a set. There's a and there's a very big gap between um, the highest status person, and the lowest status person. You know, more so than the most workplaces. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a very good catalyst for for kind of stuff happening. And you you know, when you've only got 10, 15 minutes to tell a story, you you want as fertile a ground as possible for stuff to happen. Yeah. So did it come quite easy then, the story and the writing of the script? Because you're drawing upon all those personal experiences. Yeah, I think probably, yeah, probably the sort of the kind of workplacey interaction dialogue stuff came quite naturally. I think what was what took a lot longer was, you know, I think a lot of writers have this is that there's a very long sort of stewing process where lots and lots of things that you're interested in whether it's from your experience or stuff you're thinking about or stuff you've read about or seen they sort of have to kind of percolate and sort of work their way down until they end up as one sort of concentrated thing that you can then turn into a story and you know some things you leave by the wayside and some things um end up as part of it so yeah the long stage was sort of really working out what 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 are the things i'm interested in how are how how best to sort of yeah distill those down um i mean fundamentally i think i think the talent is is really invest about investigating a feeling and it was a feeling i'd i'd had and a feeling i was interested in and and it's the feeling of sort of knowing where you want to be and having a sense of um you know i know what my my ideal destination is i know where i want to be headed but i don't know how to get there and that sort of gap between where you are and where you want to be, I think is really interesting. And then once I sort of realized that, I was like, oh yeah, that's the that's the feeling I want to sort of, um, you know, sort of look at in this film, investigate in this film. Everything else kind of flowed from that. So, you know, making an advert, for example, I, th I, I think advertising exploits that gap between where you are and where you want to be. And it says, you know, buy this, you know shit thing and you will be more you will be closer to that ideal version of yourself that we're kind of constructing um and i think that's what's going on for tommy you know i think that's why this cheesy faux philosophical car advert kind of speaks to his soul because he yeah. it, it it sort of fits the feeling he has you know I, I i want to be over there but i'm here how do i get there um and I really think I really think there's something interesting about yeah how capitalism kind of manufactures ambition and and you know goes look over there this is where you want to be this is the kind of man you could be um, if only you buy this if only you do this um, and it has to manufacture it so we'll work and we'll work towards an ideal that doesn't exist so yeah once I realised the sort of central feeling that I, I was interested in the central feeling that the protagonist has everything else, setting, story, plot, kind of flowed down from there. And that, that took a long time, but once you've got the kind of cornerstone, that's that's a good feeling. You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, you explore so much in there. And it's like you said, you do, you get a real feel of that. 
sort of capitalist, you know, and those car adverts and that scene. We've all, yeah. seen, them. We've all seen them a million times. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They have this kind of emotive quality. And mm. then, when you're watching it at the cinema, you're like, ooh. Yeah. And I don't even want a flashy car. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, the, but this is what's interesting. This is, um, this is what uh, John Berger says about advertising, which I find super interesting. He says, the purpose of advertising is to make you dissatisfied with your current life. So it's not even about the car. It's about going, there's a better version of you out there. And this is, this is why we're not even talking about the fucking car in this, in this yeah. advert. We're talking about these sort of weird philosophical concepts and we're showing a very good looking person who's, who's got their life under control driving it that's what they're sort of selling. And the car's like incidental almost, the car is just by association. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really agree with you. I, I, Cause I've had those feelings as well in cinema. As you watch these adverts and you, you sort of you start to feel something, you're like, oh my God, yeah. But if you actually listen to what they're saying, it's like, it's so empty. It's sort of so deep and vapid. so nothing at the same time, so vapid because it has to feel deep to as many people as possible, you know? So it's just incredibly shallow. Um, and it was a lot of fun to write, actually, the car advert. It was very, very fun to, like, yeah, come up with a text that, that could mean so, so much to our protagonist. And, and the audience sort of feel it, but also it's just really dumb and doesn't mean anything. And, and that, you know, and that's, it's sort of, it's a very silly idea, really, at the heart of this short film, that this stupid, you know, faux philosophical car advert activates our protagonist's, like, whole being. That's just such a dumb idea, but... It was a very fun one to, to do. <laughs> it works really well, because it does. You explore so many different things. You know, you've got the toxicity of the workplace. You've got mm. that, that ambition that everyone's felt. And yeah, yeah, I loved it. I really did. Oh, thank you so much. That's, um, yeah, that's very, very kind. And um, yeah, it was a, it was a, lot, of, a lot of fun to make. Um, and, you know, and a lot of fun. And I, I had to rely a lot on on the kind of heads of department around me to deliver that advert i've never worked on an advert before um but um yeah we we i, I learned a lot about them um in the process of, of preparing for it. Um, anna mcdonald our, our extraordinary cinematographer she has shot car adverts it was able to bring that kind of expertise and say you know the, these are the kind of lenses we'll be using you know we need to be using uh, this is how the virtual production should be kind of integrated she understood lighting um uh, yeah it was a, it was a we sort of threw everything at um that like 20 second sequence in the film yeah well I wanted to speak to you about that because it's got that beautiful shine and polish <laughs> you know, of an advert. So <laughs> did you have lots of equipment? Was there loads, you know, loads of setup? Yeah, well, it was, I mean, you virtual production stages are a hell of a lot of fun to work with. And, you know, a lot of our production value we got thanks to the fact that the entire film takes place on the set of a VP stage. Um, and, you know, for that, we we really have the team at Garden Studios in West London to thank for that. They, they, you know, believed in the project from really early doors. And I don't think any of us had shot on a VP stage before, um, but they, they really, you know, let us visit sort of whenever we wanted, test out the, the 3D environment as they were being developed, do little sort of test shoots there, you know, explained everything in painstaking detail to us. Um, Sam Kemp, our VP supervisor, was, was kind of extraordinary throughout. Um, he's from Garden. So, and that the benefit of, of having a VP stage is you can sort of then use the equipment you would use on location. If, if everything works right on, on the volume, um, there's not actually loads of special extra stuff. You can have normal lights, you can have a normal camera, normal lenses. I think we had like a, uh, an Alexa Mini with Panavision G series, anamorphics. That's what Anna would have used on an on location car. Yeah. Um, so that's what we use on the VP stage. Um, but I mean, the big difference is, and it's not so much loads of extra equipment, but it's loads of extra prep. You know, you have to do what, what if you had a green screen, you would do in post and you could fiddle around with afterwards. Really with a VP stage, you've got to do in advance. And yeah, as I say, all of the 3D environments were, were made specifically for this short film. There was no sort of, <clears throat> you know, default screensavers we downloaded. It was all made for us by... Um, 
uh, Luke Hunter Oxygen Cube, which is a, you know, he made it in the Unreal Engine. We spent several hours over Zoom like this, you know, looking at the particular types of like leaves on, on the different trees that gets driven past in the advert, moving the sun around. It's, it's very odd. It's sort of like playing God. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, we were going to garden and, and kind of test it out. So, yeah, it doesn't, it didn't feel like loads of extra equipment, but of course, behind the VP stage, there's an extraordinary amount of expertise and, and technical uh, know-how that, that Garden Studios thankfully protected us from. Was it always your plan to shoot on that VP stage? Yeah, I mean, the reason we shot on the virtual production stage, uh, there were two main reasons for it. The first one is that car adverts are just shot on VP stages. You get you know, lovely reflections off the volume that you wouldn't on a green screen. So kind of makes sense to do car ads on there. Um, but also I was interested in the metaphorical potential of the volume. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, this, it's this sort of piece of technology where you can summon picture perfect images in an instant. You can just sort of press a button and bam, you've got the like most perfect, beautiful, sunset you could ever imagine um and on location if you were really trying to capture that sunset you would have like a, a small window for magic hour you you know you'd be climbing up the mountain you'd, you'd be you know <laughs> sort of hair and makeup would be rushing into the you, there are a lot of sort of real world constraints that means you're chasing perfection you're aiming at perfection and you may, you may never you won't quite get it but the sort of the beauty of the product often is in you know where, where you do get to towards perfection on a VP stage, you can, you know, press a button and it's magic hour for like 12 hours, you know, and, and you can control absolutely everything and you can move the sun like just a tiny little, you know, millimeter that way. And um, I think there's something interesting in, in that, in like being able to summon the end result perfectly immediately and no sense of the journey that speaks to this central feeling I was trying to investigate about you know, knowing the final destination, but not knowing how to get there. There's, there's something about the VP stage that worked as a metaphor on some level for what our, our, our protagonist is feeling. Um, and yeah, I haven't seen a lot of films or, or anything really that, that sort of investigated the, the, yeah, the VP as metaphor. So that was, that was a big kind of driving force behind it. And bless them, you know, I have to shout out again, Garden Studios. It meant that because we were using it in a slightly weird way, they had to push the tech in, in ways they hadn't done before. Um, and we were often asking them to do stuff. We didn't fully understand why it was like, you know, more difficult to do or why it hadn't been done before, but they really went there for us. So yeah, I'm super grateful to those guys. Well, it, 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 yeah, the whole thing is watching it. And then I was looking into, you know, these places because I sort of hadn't really come across them before. Mm. Um, so it's interesting and it did and it was like you said it's that metaphorical journey and it just it made me think of Tommy's desire for that immediate fame you know exactly like, he was like I want that now I can see that that's mm -hmm. and it's the same thing like the car advert you know it's all it, it's that false shiny you know veneer isn't it exactly that's um I'm so glad that kind of yeah, that kind of carried because it, yeah, I, I, I really, it's really important to me that, that, you know, the, the form fits the sort of, if not the story, the form fits the like heart or soul of the thing you're trying to make. And um, yeah, that's, that's why it was so important to me that we, we did, you know, shoot it on a VP stage. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, and it also sort of, you know, that amazing thing happened, I think, where, you know, I had an extremely experienced, um, incredible crew um, and not a lot of them had shot on a VP stage before. So there was the sense over these three days that we are doing something quite difficult, you know, <laughs> and all of these people are, are really, really necessary to make that happen. And something about when you can create that, that, that sense of almost like shared, um, ambition shared you know um aims but also shared kind of jeopardy in a, in a room i think it can it can you know make for a very special um set a very special work environment so yeah i was there, there was sort of un, unforeseen benefits of working on a vp stage as well everyone just sort of 
had to wake up and go like, oh my God, okay, we've got three days to, yeah. you know, shoot a short 15 minute thing on a, on a volume. Like that's a lot. Um, and they, they, you know, they really rose to the challenge and more. And for you, that's phenomenally ambitious as well. Because this is your first short film. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> right in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, there's, there's something... There's, there's a weird thing. I don't know, there's something about the deep end that makes it easier in some ways, you know, it's that thing of like being being just out of your depth um, uh, that, yeah, is really exciting. And in a way, I didn't have time to think, oh my God, it's my first short film because it was like the first time all of us had shot on a volume. So that, that sort of first short film thing kind of went out the window. Um, uh, they, were, they were like bigger, they were like bigger challenges. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I think jumping in the deep end was was a uh, was a good way of of kind of yeah getting over that that sort of fear I might otherwise have, you know. Yeah, absolutely, I can see that because then once <laughs> you're in it, you're in it. You've got no choice. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know and 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 I sort of I didn't I set myself up to succeed. I suppose there were lots of um, you know. There are lots of things that I guess play to my strengths coming from a theatre background. Um, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's essentially one location. There's lots of like bodies that have to be kind of moved around in space. Um, you know, really, it, it the, the whole thing lives and dies based on the performance of the actors. Um, uh, yeah, in those three days, that moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, it was it was. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't, I, ca I can't imagine a more fun way to sort of, yeah, um, step into film. Um, uh, and I'm, yeah, very, very indebted to um, a lot of people, um, sort of particularly the, the real core team who, who sort of, yeah, consoled and, and mentored and gave amazing notes on the script and really were at the heart of the project from the start were, were Ellen Spence, producer Emma Darcy, who was in it and also produced yeah. it, and, and Marco Alessi, um, who's an extra extraordinary writer director and also exec for us. So yeah, I had a really, really strong kind of core team, um, uh, you know, right from the start of prep to the end of, of delivery. So let's talk about Emma Darcy, because their performance is just, I mean, I went through all the emotions. <laughs> I feel sorry for him, for Tommy in the role. Mm. And I was like, no, he's just a little upstart. And I was like, <laughs> what does he think? And then I was like, God, is he having a mental breakdown? Like with all those mm. moments. So mm. yeah, how did you come to be working with Emma and how did you build that role? That yeah, I mean, really, it was a real joint effort. Emma and I very much created and built the role of Tommy together. As I say, Emma was, um, also a producer on the project along with Ellen Spence. Um, and, you know, that, that meant that from its earliest conception, um, they were there uh, giving feedback on the script. I would, I would, I would discuss, you know, everything with them. Um, and, and yeah, we, we very much built this character from, from the ground up together. Um, in terms of how I came to be working with them, uh, we've, we've actually been working together for like, I think we first, I think Emma was first in a play I directed in 2011. Okay. We've been working together since we, we had a, we had a theatre company together for a very long time, um, and you know we've we've sort of shifted roles um, over the years. It's we've co-directed together, um, we've co-written together, co-devised. Often I'm directing them because they're just such an unbelievably good actor. It's stupid not to put them you know in stuff. Um, they've designed shows, they, they sort of, um, were kind of the artistic director of, of different things we did, um, on this, they were producers. So we, we have a, a, a really, yeah, we have like 12 years of, of practice of, of, you know, doing like detailed, precise, um, uh, you know, really investigative work on character, on text and, and, and we do a lot of prep together. Um, and when you combine that sort of shorthand and that work ethic and that, you know, mutual trust and mutual respect, if you combine that with 
Emma as an actor who is just, you know, I, I thought they were just phenomenal when I, when I first saw them, you know, all, that, all those years ago in like 2011. I, and I think that even more now, and I'm really pleased the world is like realizing that as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're a proper, like, proper instinctive actor who, who lives for like, in the moment, liveness, proper experience as the character, proper immersion. Um, yeah, when you combine that kind of prep and that work ethic with that instinct for realness, for truth, for liveness, it's 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 an unbelievably potent combination. So, yeah, I had I had no doubt that that Emma could and would go there. Um, and yeah, I'm 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 amazed by their performance in this. Even even knowing everything I know about them, I think their work is so just like detailed and it's so and, and they can just transmit their thoughts to to a viewer um in, in in such an extraordinary way so yeah i'm i'm uh i'm in awe of emma um as always and that comes through as well i think for me it was that dual performance because mm. so tommy on the set is you know, quite shy i don't doesn't really know what to do there's the awkward bits with the coffee mm. But then when you've got those dreamlike sequences of what could have been, yeah, um, you know, there's this confidence and you know, <laughs> this character that just shines through. So it, it's like a dual performance in one, which I really mm -hmm. enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, they 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 can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the talent has screened on Channel 4, mm. which is amazing. So everyone out there knows you know making a short film is hard festivals all of that and then distribution so yeah can you tell us about how that came getting, about getting to people actually watch it yeah yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah it's it's a, it's a great thing i mean we this is there's a very easy answer to this we we are entirely to thank for this is um the iris lgbtq plus prize in yeah. cardiff it's the festival where the talent premiere, the world premiere was there. Um, and we had this one beautiful queer audience and, and community of filmmakers to share it with. And yeah, the simple answer is every short film that gets nominated for the best of British short at the Iris Prize gets screened on Channel 4. Iris have a partnership with Film 4. Um, and yeah, Iris was the first festival we got into. So we were absolutely over the moon we, you were at the top level straight away we literally straight away we, we 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 couldn't believe it and and it was it was really nice we because there was there was of course there was an awful kind of wait from when we first started pressing submit on these different film festivals between then and hearing back but then once we did hear back from iris it was like well you know if nothing else happens this is this is just more than we could have hoped for it's extraordinary and um yeah it, it, it kind of broadcast on channel four like last week and it's been on all four since and i've been um yeah it's been it's been very very cool um people being able to watch it easily um yeah and uh, yeah i'm i'm just ex extremely grateful to iris for that no it's amazing it's it because distribution is such a hard part of it yeah. And in the UK, it's particularly difficult. So I just think it's always incredible when I see these filmmakers and these films out on things like that. It's mm. like a celebratory moment. I really agree. And, and you know, and I think there's some hope for, for distribution. I think, I think more and more, certainly independent cinemas are starting to screen short films before the feature films that people are paid to see. Like, like they we do that in Europe. Europe. Yeah, and, and, and the thing that, of course, kibosh that was advertising and the kind of car adverts that are in this, uh, in this short film, um, you know, the, it, it doesn't make financial sense um, if you're looking at, you know, um, uh, films and filmmaking just purely as like a product. Um, it doesn't make financial sense to screen a short film because it's not selling anything. Um, but, you know, what, what better way to, to, to get them out there, to distribute them, to... Um, to let filmmakers experience what it is to screen your your work in front of an audience. Um, so I, I really hope that that you know that trend continues and we yeah have actually watched fewer car adverts before. Uh, <laughs> more, films more, more shorts, yeah. <laughs> and then to talk about sort of achievements and everything, you've got your Biffa nomination. Yeah, I mean that is like yeah, that, that's, it's just unbelievable. It's. Absolutely, that was just to be long listed was 
um, we were utterly, utterly over the moon to be longlisted. We kind of couldn't believe it. And then to be nominated after that um, was just extraordinary. Um, and, you know, and again, hopefully it means more people will watch it. Um, yeah. it's, it's hopefully another reason that people will click kind of play. Um, uh, and yeah, just to be listed alongside those four other shorts, which I've seen and I love, um, it's just a real honor. So yeah, very, very grateful to all the Biffa voters. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just been, it's just been fun to kind of meet the other filmmakers and, and celebrate with them. There's a good variety. Um, I mean, there's yeah. always actually, I find in the end, the nomination that, you know, Biffa are incredible. There's a real different scales and different types of film, yeah. which I think is brilliant because it would be quite easy, I think, to have very similar, you know, all well, yeah. very well made and whatever, but I love the variety they've got on there. And I think so. And, and, and you know, and, and it's, you know, as, as you say, this is my first short film. We also didn't, you know, a lot of people worked very hard to make it look expensive, but it, it actually wasn't expensive. Um, uh, we, we did, we did pay crew, we paid everyone, but, um, you know, uh, a, a lot of the, you know, we, we had a lot of kind of working favors and working with companies, um, who kind of gave in kind support in different ways. And, and we just had some very skilled people working on it. Um, but we didn't spend mega bucks on it. Um, and yeah, Biffa sort of take that into, we didn't have any funding either. We didn't have any external funding, public or private yeah. or otherwise. So um, yeah, the um, the fact that Biffa kind of take that into account, I think is is really positive. Yeah, it matters. It really does. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. So, I mean, the talent has had such phenomenal success. What are you working on next? Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's... It's, it's funny, you know, because it, it feels like um, just the, the sort of industry, it feels like there's a bit of a crossroads, I suppose, for me as a, as a, as a maker at the moment um, between like, you know, I wrote and directed the talent. So it's like, well, what are you going to write and direct next? You're, you're a writer and director. So, you know, there's this that's the kind of path over there. And then there's another path, which is like, you know, directing other people's stuff and directing for television and, you know, um, but directing, I, I'm sort of feeling like, yeah, the need to kind of choose, but I'm trying to resist that because actually I want to do both. I love directing other people's work um, and and I love writing. Um, so I'm trying to sort of, yeah, balance those those things. Um, I'm, I am writing a feature. Um, I am uh, co-creating uh, a TV show, which is in the very early stages of its development with, with two colleagues. Um, and I'm kind of going around meeting people. Um, and yeah, the, I think the challenge for me is I'm a very tunnel visioned person. Um, and okay. I think you, you sort of need to, you need to, I need to sort of, you know, do that thing of like having a slate of like a bunch of different things all going on at the moment and, and spinning several plates at once. So I have to, yeah, sort of, um, work out how to do that. And, and uh, <laughs> it's something I like very like laser vision kind of tendencies um so yeah we'll, we'll see but some some really exciting kind of things on the horizon amazing well thomas thank you so much this has been brilliant Ooh, thank you so much thank you so much sarah